Okay, this is part two of the airboat build. In this video, we're going to go through assembling the big chunks of the hull. In my last video, I went through the planning and materials, and uh, where I left was basically this large piece of aluminum that was sitting on jack stands, ready to be cut up and welded. As I mentioned in the first video, my plan was to use this 4 inch tubing as the chines, so this would connect the bottom of the hull to the sides, providing the radius, as well as providing structure. I used a skill saw and cut pie cuts in both tubings, and then used the straps to bend the tubing up, and then welded it in place. This worked really well, I was able to get a completely symmetrical curve in both tubings, I did uh, measure the radius and um, calculate the amount of height for the bow. I also welded angle iron tabs onto the tubing and the, the thought with that is that it would help me position the sheet of aluminum on these tubings. It turns out it wasn't necessary, it was just an extra step and they didn't actually help much at all. The tubes were arranged on blocks and jack stands and then the aluminum was placed over top. Then I used clamps to position and welded it in place. All this went together pretty straightforward. As mentioned, the bottom sheet metal is 5086 and the tubing is 6061. But it welded up fine. It initially did just stitch welds and then eventually ran an entire bead across the entire thing. The miller I'm using is a 180 amp and it worked great, uh, although it did take uh, all the amps that my uh, garage was able to supply. The next step was to flip the hull over. I drilled a couple holes in the tubing and ran a chain through it. Then I connected that chain to my cherry picker. Using the cherry picker, I was able to get the hull up. This was pretty sketchy though. It was a windy day when I was doing this and the wind was throwing it around quite a bit. I did have to uh, make an extension on the cherry picker, but eventually I was able to get it up and get it over without uh, crushing myself. I wished I had a large gantry or a taller shop with a crane but I was able to make do with this. With the hull flipped over, the next step was to make the stringers. So for this, I plan to use aluminum channel. And in order to bend the channel, I had to modify a roller bender. The roller bender I bought from Princess Auto, it's very similar to one from Harbor Freight. It's just a cheap Chinese tubing bender, but it does the job and it was easy enough to modify. This round stock is Delrin. I used it to machine the dies for the roller. It worked pretty well. It's nice to work with. It cuts easily in the chop saw and even my little lathe machined it nicely. I used a couple of the bearings from the roller dies and put it all back together. You can see how it's cut to accept the channel. And testing it on a piece of channel, it worked really well. This piece at the top of the bow has a nice gentle radius. Most of the stringers have a much more aggressive curve and the roller worked really well at bending them. To hold the stringers in place for welding, I had to make these large C-clamps. It's made out of just scrap steel, and I cut up some C-clamps to make the clamping areas. They worked really well. I found they did work better if I used some straps to reinforce it just to make it a bit stronger, and that was uh, pretty convenient because they were adjustable. The screw parts from the C-clamps in this initial iteration were too weak. They, uh, they just didn't handle the load that well, and they kind of galled up. 
So I ended up replacing that with some larger uh, screws from larger C-clamps. And uh, with that, it worked really well. Here you can see the larger C-clamp pieces. Here the stringers are getting welded in place. Ultimately I had seven stringers across the bottom of the hull. The transom I made out of a piece of the 5086. Again, that's a 3 16 plate. I clamped a radius using some flat stock and then use a plasma cutter to cut the radius out. At this point it's a 25 inch from the bottom of the hull to the top of the transom there. I think it's actually too large and I'm going to cut that down a bit deeper because it necessitates the engine and, and prop being too high up. So I'm, I'm going to trim that down in the future. The transom was welded to the hull and to the, the tubing for the chines. And I did have to widen it a bit at the end, so I welded in extra pieces at the end, welded it flush, and then not pictured here, but I did uh, reinforce it with uh, some overlaps. I added transverse stringers to reinforce the bottom of the hull. And these are welded on top of the other stringers. I did put a gentle arc in these. It's about uh, one and a half to two inches depending on the exact location of the hull. I put the roller bender back with the roller dies for tubing that I used for the gunnels and also for the bracing around the windshield. The gunnels are made out of two inch aluminum and uh, it's hard to tell in these pictures but it does have a radius in near the bow and bending the two inch tubing through the roller bender that was quite a bit of work but it actually did a decent job of doing that as well. Welding the sides of the boat was pretty easy. This is 50-52, 1 8 aluminum. The way I did it is I clamped it in place, put some tack welds, and then I ran a plasma cutter along the top to trim it down. This was remarkably fast and easy. And then I completed all the welds. I did this for both the, the front and the rear of the boat, and then connected the panels. Where they're connected, I welded them flush, and then I added reinforcement on the inside to overlap about uh, four inches on each side. I did also run a stringer the entire length of the boat near the mid portion of the sides. So all this together, I think it's pretty sturdy. And all this structural stuff was done by basically me just eyeballing it. As I mentioned in my first video, I'm not an experienced boat builder. But basically I'm just winging it, learning along the way, and trying to minimize areas that I think will have stress fractures or fractures from the copious amounts of vibration that this boat is going to have. With all the sides welded up, this is starting to actually look like a boat. For the front, I used leftover aluminum from the rest of the build. At the very front, there's some of the 4-inch tubing, and then some of the 316's plate is also used. 
There's some round tubing that goes across the front there. That's the origin of the windshield and it also serves as structure for the, the deck at the bow. The windshield is supported with this curved aluminum tubing and eventually I'll have Lexan windows at the front, most likely a canvas at the back. So the overall shape of the hull is pretty much done. There's lots of little things to do still to complete the hull. And of course there's quite a bit more to do to complete the boat. Coming up next, I'll go through attaching the poly bottom, construction of the rudders, the steering and the rigging, eventually we'll get to the engine, the gearbox and the prop, and then there's going to be a million other things before this boat is complete. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.